In our last video, we talked about what the atom looks like and how it has changed over time. Today, we're going to look at what makes up the atom. Well, our atom is made up of what is called subatomic particles. The word sub, meaning below, like a submarine, which goes below C, and atomic, meaning atom. So subatomic means particles that are smaller than an atom. There are three types of particles. We have protons, which are positive. We have neutrons, which are neutral. They have no charge to them. And we have electrons, which are negative. And from the picture that you can see, you can get a relative view of their size. Neutrons and protons are about the same size and electrons are a little bit smaller. Let's talk about where the location of the particles are. So we have the center part called the nucleus. And inside the nucleus, we have protons and neutrons. Our protons are positive and our neutrons are, ne are neutral. So our nucleus has an overall positive charge. Then we have these energy levels and they're the rings around the nucleus. And those go with the rows of the periodic table. We'll go through some examples of that in a bit. And then we have our negative electrons, which surround the nucleus on those energy levels. If you think of a magnet, the positive side of a magnet and a negative magnet will be attracted to each other. Just like the nucleus is positive and the electrons are negative. So that atom is held together kind of like a magnet. What's really interesting about the atom is the relative size. So if the nucleus of the atom were a size of a quarter, then our first energy level with the first electrons would be the size of a football stadium. The atom is actually made up of mostly empty space. The nucleus is very, very, very tiny, and the electrons are very far away from the nucleus if we look at the relative size. If we talk about the mass of each particle, we have this new unit and it's called an atomic mass unit. It's abbreviated AMU. Subatomic particles are really, really small. So using grams to measure their mass just doesn't really make sense. So the mass of a neutron, we consider one AMU and the mass of a proton, we also consider one AMU. And as you can see, they're about the same size. Electrons are really small, and we consider them having a mass of zero AMUs. So neutrons and protons each weigh one, and electrons weigh zero. Let's take a look at what elements look like from the periodic table. So I have two examples of carbon there, and every periodic table looks just a little bit different, or it might be arranged a little bit different. So again, periodic tables will have slight differences between them in how they're organized. Some might only give you symbols. Some might give you symbols on also the element name. But all periodic tables will have what's called an atomic number, an atomic mass. They just might be in different placements or locations within the element on the periodic table. Elements on the periodic table are considered neutral, which means they're not charged. They don't have any positive or negative charge left over. So all positives will cancel out all negatives. And again, we'll see an example of this in a bit. So let's look at where the atomic number is, where the symbol and where the atomic mass is on these elements. So our element symbol is always that big letter. Sometimes it's two letters. So for carbon, our element symbol is just a capital C. The atomic number is the whole number of the two numbers on the element. So in one periodic table, carbon might have the six just directly above it in the center, or it might be in the upper left corner. Either way, the atomic number for carbon is the whole number on the element, which is six. And then we have this decimal number, and that's the atomic mass. 
I always remember the mass because it looks more like a mass. It looks more like something you would uh, weigh or measure out on an electronic balance. So let's count the subatomic particles for carbon. So let's look at the periodic table, the element, and what it looks like. And the atomic number, which again is the whole number, tells us the number of protons within each atom. So in carbon, we have six protons, and the protons sit in the nucleus. The mass number tells us the protons plus the neutrons. So the first thing we do is we take that mass and we round it to the nearest number, which is 12. And we know that we have six protons in carbon because it's the atomic number. So we can set up an equation. The mass of 12 equals the protons, six plus the neutrons. If we subtract the six, then that tells us we have six neutrons in carbon. Remember the neutrons go with the protons in the center, in the nucleus. So carbon has six neutrons. And the elements on the periodic table are neutral. So every positive will have a negative to cancel it out. There are six positive protons. Therefore, you will need six negative electrons. So carbon has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. Now, not every atom will have equal number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. It just so happens that they're the same in this example. So let's put the electrons around the carbon nucleus. So the first ring goes with row one of the periodic table. And the second ring goes with row two of the periodic table. So if we find carbon in that periodic table, which it's number six on there, carbon is located in the second row, so it's going to have two rings or two energy levels around it. On our first energy level, that goes with the first row of the periodic table, we have two elements there. So we can put two electrons on that first ring. If we go to the second row of the periodic table, if we count over, carbon is one, two, three, four. It is the fourth element over. So that means we're gonna put one, two, three, four electrons on that second ring. So if you count them up, we have six protons, six neutrons, and a total of six electrons in carbon. Let's do another example. Let's use the element sodium. So let's start by counting the subatomic particles. So here in sodium, the atomic number is 11 and the atomic mass is 22.9. We're gonna round that to 23. Remember the protons are equal to the atomic number. Therefore, sodium has 11 protons. The mass is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So we have a mass of 23, and that's gonna equal 11 plus the number of neutrons. If I subtract the 11, then that gives me a total of 12 neutrons. And lastly, this is neutral because it's right off of the periodic table. So the protons will equal the electrons. So in this case, we will also have 11 electrons. So 11 protons, 12 neutrons, and 11 electrons. Let's put them in a Bohr model. All right, so here's your sodium and our protons, neutrons, electrons. So let's start by drawing the nucleus, which will have our protons and our neutrons. If we find sodium on the periodic table, it's in the third row. So we're gonna have to draw one, two, three rings around sodium to put our electrons on. 
All right, let's go to our first ring, our first energy level. That one can hold two electrons. So I'll put two electrons on there. Moving on to our second row of the periodic table, we're not quite yet to sodium, so we have to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons that go with the second row. So how we do that, we put one, two, three, four, and then go back and pair them up. Five, six, seven, eight to fill up our second row. We are now to the third row where sodium is the first element. So to get to sodium, we only need one electron there. So we put one electron on our third energy level. If we count up, we have a total of 11 electrons in our picture. Let's do another example. Let's count the subatomic particles for lithium. Starting with our atomic number, the whole number, and recognizing our atomic mass, which is 6.9, we're gonna round that to seven. The protons are equal to the atomic number, so lithium has three protons. The mass is equal to the protons plus the neutrons. So seven equals three plus neutrons, which will mean that lithium has a total of four neutrons. And this is neutral, it's right off of the periodic table. So the protons will equal the electrons. So lithium will have three electrons. Let's go to the Bohr model. All right, so with lithium, Let's start by drawing our nucleus, and we'll have three protons and four neutrons sitting in the nucleus. On the periodic table, lithium is in the second row, so we need to draw two energy levels around the nucleus. Looking at our first row, we have to fill it up with hydrogen and helium, our two electrons there. And to get to lithium, there's only one, it's the first one in the row, so we only need to add one electron there. So in our model, we have three protons, four neutrons, and three electrons drawn for lithium.